Hey guys, thanks for joining me. In my last video, I focused on the wrinkle finish, and that was my second try. And I had mentioned I wanted to go ahead and get started on trying to reproduce this dial scale indicator. So let's take a look at uh, what I've been able to accomplish. So the first thing I did was, again, document the existing dial scale indicator, making uh, precise measurements. So when I go to the computer and start reproducing the graphics, I've got, uh, you know, all my notes in front of me. There are numerous programs out there to recreate these graphics. In my case, I just used uh, Microsoft Word. Very, very simple process. Um, I created a rectangle and then a rectangle within the rectangle and then started uh, drawing in the lines. And then I added the color as well to get the gold um, here on the ends and down the side. Now the fonts that you see in the middle, I actually uh, trimmed those after the fact, tried to knock off some of the edges and make those particular fonts match you know the fonts from the original uh, production piece. There are many vendors out there that have great water slide decals. I've had these MicroMark water slide decals now for some time. They've done uh, really well for me, especially on an inkjet printer. And here you can see this. these are my settings. Again, I used a t-shirt transfer because I'm taking the image and I'm actually inverting the image. And I will apply the image to the piece of plastic that I use for the dial cover on the inside. With the decal printed, it's now time to put some clear coat on it. And this is a requirement before I can apply the decal. You can see I used an acrylic coating. Now here you can see I'm using some basswood I picked up. It's about 1 16th in thickness. This will be used as my form factor to create the dial cover made of plastic. Here I am cutting out the basswood and again I'm just referencing my measurements that I took before of the dial scale itself. Now, again, I need to make that just a little bit bigger because I've got to allow room for that plastic material to wrap around. So it's a little trial and error. Um, what I first did was just cut this thing to scale and then went back and knocked off probably two or three millimeters on the sides, top and bottom. And that gave me a really nice fit. So again, this is my pattern that I used. You can see the X is the center spot, and I'll continue to use that piece as well. And I'll show how in just a moment. But uh, here I am again just using uh, you know, my straight edge razor, and uh, this basswood is uh, tremendously soft, especially only being a sixteenth of an inch thick, and just uh, cutting out this uh, center piece. Again, which I'll set aside because I need that. That'll be part of my uh, form factor. So here I am again just looking at my form factor. I'm just uh, double-checking all my measurements. I'm comparing the form factor against the original dial cover for thickness and size. And then here I'm knocking off those corners, 45 degree angles, and then just touching them with a the file. Again, they're slightly rounded. And again, that's a, a pretty good match, I believe, to the existing plastic dial cover that was used. It's uh, pictured uh, here. And again, uh, here's a quick look at the material that I used. I've had this product since uh, 2012. Works really, really well. Uh, it's easy to work with. Take my heat gun, and again, you can see I've got my centerpiece. I've got my stock plastic laying over the top of that. And I'm actually going to take my heat gun at this point in time and just heat up the plastic. And then I'm going to lay the other top piece over it and apply pressure. And you can see me doing that here in the photos. And then apply more heat and just continue back and forth the process. You know, no need to get in any big hurry. Um, just apply the heat. Again, you don't want to get it too hot because the plastic will start to uh, wrinkle and that will create a bigger problem. So um, here's what I ended up with. Um, it's not uh, perfect, but uh, I think it will serve me well, or at least uh, I hope so. We'll know here in just a moment. So next, I pulled out my Novus Polish, number one, number two. Started out with my number two, and again, just knocked off some of the imperfections that I created 
when I was forming the plastic. Got it all cleaned up nicely. I know it's kind of hard to see, so I changed the background here so it shows up a little bit better on some of the photographs. And you can see here now there's the form factor, the existing dial scale, the new water slide decal against the existing uh, dial cover. So we're almost there. There's just a few uh, housekeeping things here. You can see again I'm trimming up the uh, water slide uh, decal. I'm still leaving some room on the edges uh, just to make it easy to apply. And then uh, one of the requirements again some lukewarm water. Then you place the uh, water slide decal in the water maybe 30 seconds to a minute and a half. And I think in this case uh, it took about one minute before I started uh, getting separation of the uh, decal itself from the uh, backing paper. Now with the water slide decal loose from that back piece it's time to get ready to apply it now to the plastic dial cover and here you can see I have two products Microset, Microsole and I'll use number one first followed by number two and here again I'll use a, a paintbrush and I'll apply some of the Microset to the back or inside piece of the new dial cover that I created and it will actually allow the decal itself to be positioned and be placed onto the uh, plastic uh, dial cover that we just created. And here again I'm just spending some additional time just to make sure that I've got that uh, water slide decal positioned correctly on the new dial cover and I'm using more of the Microset product and also kind of going back and forth again just to make sure all the air bubbles are removed and I've got a nice fit. So next I applied the Microsole and again the purpose of this is really to kind of soften the label and allow the label itself to kind of get down into the material itself and kind of stretch itself around those edges and you can see it doing just that where it's kind of sitting down on the bottom side now of the new uh, dial cover that we created and here again I'm using a q-tip and just getting out the remaining air bubbles by applying very light pressure so after letting the decal set up for maybe 30 to 45 minutes I trimmed it up there with the scissors and you can see the final product now and I tell you, it looks great. Uh, it went on well. Looks good. Very few uh, air bubbles got trapped. So overall, I'm satisfied, and I think this will, uh, will serve me well. So again, just a few photos here. I wish I had just a little bit more gold tint in there, maybe a little bit more brown. But, uh, you know, again, I think this will serve me well. Next up is getting the medallion back on the radio itself on the radio cabinet and again I'm using some spray on adhesive on the back side of the medallion and I'll let that set up for a few minutes start to get tacky and then apply it back to the old uh, cabinet that I refinished with the wrinkle paint here again I'm spending some time cleaning up that bake light handle as well as doing the de-rusting of the screws that actually attach the uh, handle back to the top side of the cabinet. Then I'm using again my Novus polish number one and number two just to clean up that handle. Here again I spent some time with the antenna. I have it mounted. I have grommets at the top. At the bottom I didn't have a grommet that fit so I used heat shrink. And at the photos it's really hard to see that dial scale indicator but once this piece here, that back plane piece, is painted gold, I think it will pop. And we get that chassis, you know, back into the uh, radio cabinet itself. But I did want to share some pictures now of the medallion back on the, uh, the radio with the wrinkle finish. Again, with that dial scale indicator back in place. And I think that dial scale indicator, I've just got it uh, tacked in right now with some hot glue. I've got it tilted just a little to the right, I noticed, so you know I'll clean that up a little bit later when I put the permanent adhesive in. 
and again you see I've got the antenna now mounted and this cabinet really looks phenomenal that first try I had it applying the wrinkle finish um, you know I just got it really really too thick and uh, learned a lot so this second time I wish I had just a little more wrinkle but uh, believe me it's not worth uh, stripping and starting all over again and this color is uh, really really spot on you know if I go back and look at my pictures that I took as a reference from underneath the handle uh, this is almost uh, spot on from what it should be so again uh, probably over the next week or two I promise I'm going to dig into the electronic restoration and try to get this thing back together within uh, two to three weeks and then I'll wrap things up by fabricating those uh, pieces to uh, mount the radio itself to some bicycle handlebars. So for those out there that watched, I hope you found the information uh, valuable and it may help uh, others out there that face um, you know, a dial scale reproduction. Again, thanks for uh, watching, and I appreciate my new subscribers out there as well.